Yeah, you're right here. <laughs> Let's try one minute. 23, 24. No, don't do that. We have we have to. Oh. Throughout this presentation, Jane, Hoban, Hector, and Bryson will be talking about the longest bubble experiment. The goal of this experiment is to find out on um, what kind of clothing would the bubble last the longest. Our hypothesis was that the bubble will survive longer in clothing made of polyester, as it does not change its shape easily and is not hygroscopic. The phenomenon of attracting and holding water molecules from the surrounding environment. The independent variable is the type of cloth used. The dependent variable is the amount of time the bubble survives. And the controlled variable is the liquids used and the size of the bubble and the size of the clothing used. Our materials are a glove, a soccer glove, jeans, a hoodie, 15 millimeters of dishwash, 7.5 milliliters of glycerin, 240 milliliters of water, a timer, a 50 mil 500 milliliter container, a dropper, and uh, scissors. There are nine steps to follow in this experiment. Step one, gather all materials. Step two, pour the three liquids, dishwash, glycerin, and water into the 500 millimeter container. Step 3. Stir the liquid for it to mix well together. Step 4. Let the liquid sit on the container for 24 hours. Step 5. Cut the top part of the dropper. Step 6. After 24 hours, begin to blow bubbles using the liquid. Step 7. Bounce the bubbles on different types of clothing. Step 8. Record how long the bubble survives on each type of clothing. Step 9. Repeat steps 7 and 8 several times so that the experiment has more reliable and precise data results. During the experiment, be careful not to cut yourself when using scissors and be careful not to bump on places while bouncing the bubbles. Please watch your back. As shown in the table, bubbles on the hood lasted significantly longer than those on the jeans or gloves. However, bubbles on the soccer glove popped as soon as it reached the surface. We have came up with the result that there is no linear mathematical pattern because this type of data is a categorical graph data. However, we can see that the bubble lasted significantly longer with hoodie than with other clothes. Our hypothesis is proven to be incorrect. The factor that seems to determine the time the bubble lasts is not what the clothing is made out of, but rather the presence of oil and dirt. The more dirt and oil there are, the less the bubble survives. Soccer glove had a substantial amount of dirt, jeans had a little dirt because of air pollution, gloves had no oil but little dirt, and hoodie had no oil nor dirt as it was washed the day before the experiment. 
Because we did not have the sophisticated equipment, there would be human errors such as the size of the bubbles and the frequency of bubbles bounced. Some bubbles we blew were of various sizes which might have affected the result. Moreover, some bubbles might have touched the surface of the clothing more than the others which might cause them to pop faster. If we had a machine that could blow exact same size of bubbles and another machine that could bounce the bubbles in the same frequency, the result could have been more reliable and accurate. If we have another chance to conduct the experiment, we want to change the independent variable to the different types of dishwashers. As our group had limited types of dishwashers, our experiment was conducted with a single dishwash.